Welcome back to the video Vortex. And boy, did the Vortex suck us in and bring us down a dark, deep <laughs> hole here with this one. We decided to watch, what the hell, Night Beast. I almost forgot what we watched for a second. Though. <laughs> How could I forget? Did we really decide to watch it, though? I mean, kinda, I guess we kind of yeah, did, but... Yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's, you know, it's almost like Crapster Peace Theater in a way. It's kind of our fault, you know, with... <laughs> That not, but this one I think, to for me in a good way, you know, like cheesy, horribly made, <laughs> not a, not a good movie, but like in a good way, if that makes sense, right? Like the kind of things that we like to watch, especially here on Video Vortex. I'm Josh. I'm joined here with Tiana. Hey. And Donnie. Nope. And we are from the All American Spook Show podcast, which you can listen to every Monday at 6 p.m. East, wherever you get your podcast, or right here on the YouTube channel. And we also encourage you to hang out here on the channel um, and check out all of our other series that we have going on, including Grindhouse Gutter and Hammer Horror in Order every month. Um, you know, click the bell to be notified, hit, hit like, subscribe, all those things that you normally do when you're here on YouTube. Come on, look, you're watching this on YouTube. You know what to do. Please do it. Help us out. Um, yeah, the whole premise of Video Vortex is we kind of randomly land on some movies and sometimes on purpose from the, basically the stuff you would have watched in the old video store days from the eighties and nineties, for the most part stuff you would have rented, you would have seen the cover and like, Oh, this looks awesome and rented it. Right. So this is the kind of the stuff that we're talking about here. And I think Tiana, right. This is probably one of those kind of movies, right. Where you would have seen the cover and been like, what the hell is this? Or this looks awesome. Right. Oh yeah. Definitely with the creature design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I saw someone compare it to predator. I don't know where the hell they're getting that other than, <laughs> The premise of an alien that comes to Earth. Maybe the That's Spanish it. predator, El Predator. <laughs> <laughs> El Pre By the way, this beast, this night beast, which is, it's an alien. Yeah. Which yeah. I, I think night beast is a horrible title for this, by the way. <laughs> not, I'm not saying I have a better suggestion, but I think that's a horrible <laughs> title for this. Um, yeah. But it's an alien that comes to Earth. But like this, this beast, has to be the worst shot in movie, like worse than a stormtrooper. He's got, he's, he's horrible. He's got a yeah. ray gun. He's got a laser ray gun thing that he can shoot. And like, if it hits you, like you just disintegrate, right? You just evaporate into dust or whatever at best. Um, but he, he, he has no accuracy. He's just, <laughs> just, just lasers flying everywhere. And then he's just hopes that it hits somebody. Right. Yeah. Then again, the people that are shooting at him aren't any better. <laughs> I don't think there's one shot in this movie that actually lands on the monster. Like, no. they're like, the guns don't do anything. Yeah, because you're not hitting them, you know? <laughs> there's not, I don't recall one shot of like, you know, in most movies, like if you're shooting back and forth, you come back and see, you know, the monster kind of jerk back like, oh no, I've been shot. You know, that it, they never even do that. It's just bam, bam, bam. And then... <laughs> He's still just kind of flailing away with his laser gun. And it's for like most of the movie too, <laughs> especially the oh, beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I love to like, you know, we don't give deep spoilers here for these. I mean, like we normally do spoilers on the podcast, but for these videos on YouTube, we don't really go too deep into spoilers because we don't want to give a bunch of stuff away. But I love that when they finally decide that like the only way they're going to be able to take down this monster is to shoot the gun out of his hand. Do you want me to kill him? No. Get the gun out of his hand first, <laughs> then we'll kill him. <laughs> That's just backwards logic, right? <laughs> and then they they take the gun out, and then it just like you know he, they never they never investigate that any further no. or try to scoop it up or anything. Just kind of shoot he, it out of his hand, then he runs away. He does some damage still without that gun. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It didn't stop him or really slow him down at all. I mean, he's still, which it leads to one of the better kills I think we've had on Video Vortex, and we've had some pretty good ones in some of these movies. But like out, the one where the the guy, I'm not even gonna say which character, but one guy's head is dis <laughs> detached from his body. <laughs> we'll say that <laughs> it is removed, <laughs> but it is it is it is cheap and grand. Th this was awesome. Though. I mean, it's it's a uh, who was it that was written and directed by Don Dohler, which apparently he has a whole slate of, like, I guess there's a bunch of Don Dohler 
fans out there, right? I, yeah. I don't recall yeah. seeing anything that the dude has done, but apparently it's a it's a whole cult thing, right? We also can't can't uh, you know cover this without mentioning uh, that this was J.J. Abrams' uh, very first credit. So apparently J.J. Abrams is not in it, but he's he did something, right? Yeah, no, he he. Uh, I think he did the score for this. Which that's crazy. Someone that goes on to work. Well, didn't he do like Star Wars, Star Trek, like tons of other stuff? Yeah. yeah. And his start is on Night Beast. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the classic case. You got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Like we said off the top, we're going to have the professor's little bit here. Like he wasn't able to be with us. Um, but before we get him in here, we kind of do a group rating here. So maybe we can we can come to a consensus now for what we think, and then we'll add it to his, and we'll come up with some conclusion. So the highest rating we've ever given, our scale on Video Vortex is 0 through 10. So the highest we've given anything, and I think we've given out four or five different movies, is a 7. So, I mean, for me, I think it's at least that. I think it's on mm-hmm. par with Samurai Cop or something like that, right? So yeah, what do you all think? I don't, I don't know if I'd put it quite at the uh i'd probably give it maybe a five or a six i mean I don't, i'm not gonna argue too hard yeah. about it because I mean, it's not a good movie it's not, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not. A hilarious movie with one of the worst sex scenes in movie history <laughs> i might add <laughs> i forgot about that they're just oh like, i didn't uh... forget I didn't, <laughs> I didn't how could you forget what do you think tiana like where where do you land probably like a six we'll meet there for now we'll call it a six and then we'll see what the professor has to say. He might go 10. So he might <laughs> have a feeling with him. He might skew the uh, the number a little bit. So uh, we're going to travel into the future. And you'll see me in just a second. All right. So we, we, we just traveled through time. We fast forwarded a couple of days. And I, I, you know, somewhere along the path, the, the, the time vortex, I found Professor Smoke. So here we go. We've just been discussing without you a few days ago night be so what's your two cents what's your take on this one ah well i'll start off by one thing i said and i may have said this on the podcast on some other episode i don't don't know if there's been an episode to warrant this yet but pretty sure i might have mentioned it i i I have a on my own special subgenre for these movies and by the way this is got it on vhs is it right here paragon video uh release on that, VHS. That is worth $4,000. <laughs> well, it's signed by Ted, producer Ted Bohas, so it's got to be at oh, least $10,000 more there. So, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. That, yeah. that adds to it. <laughs> but uh, not, these types of uh, no-budget sci-fi horror type things, uh, like I, I I affectionately dub them space trash. <laughs> so, you know, just sci-fi detritus, right? <laughs> but fun, a fun one, this one is, I think. And I know y'all talked about it. And I know y'all probably mentioned. <laughs> I can I can foresee that you mentioned certain things like uh, the special and not so special effects, visual effects of the lasers and the <laughs> disintegrating peoples and the uh, and the sex scene that <laughs> uncomfortably. Oh, yeah, we just uncomfortably long. About that. Jesus Christ, that's the worst <laughs> sex scene with the film. And I, I think I saw something too, where like they were like, "Yeah, we need to sex this up a little bit more." So they actually. Dude called her and brought her back <laughs> to do that, and, and 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 I think the nudity too, like the other, yeah. Because remember, there's two ladies that like pretty much full nudity in this yeah, thing. Yeah. I think it was the case with her too, like and and apparently Don Dolor wasn't uh didn't really wasn't a big fan of that type of stuff, but he recognized yeah. that he needed it. So yeah, and also by the way, uh, while you mentioned him, Don Dolor. He is the director of a lot of these movies that I just said under that kind of you know subgenre that I kind of made for these that space trash subgenre because he did a lot of sci-fi horror films alien factor i think was one and in some sequels to those as well right? all the way up into That's the 90s thing that I, saw, I, I don't recall if we talked about this the other day you know so if, forgive me if you you're watching this and you're like they just talked about that but i don't think we did this is kind of i think in a way a sequel to the alien the alien factor movie I believe it. Is. It could be i believe there, it is because yeah, yeah. apparently they use some of the same actors in the same roles or something but like it's not like full on sequel, but I guess there's similarities. So yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that. I, I I, I've seen Alien Factor, but it was way back. This one I've seen a few more times recently in recent years than I have. But Alien Factor I saw once on VHS back in the day, and I can't remember. I can't recall other than it being super, even just as low budget, if not more so than this one. <laughs> 
maybe not quite on the same entertainment value level as this one, but I mean, I'd have to, I would have to revisit again to, to make that assumption for sure. But I'm sure that it will come up on, if it doesn't yeah. come up here, it'll come up on the pocket at some point. We'll watch <laughs> yeah. the alien factor, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. These are like, I, I love, again, I have the, that soft spot for these, these are regional too. I, you know, just a certain, you know, a filmmaker making something in his backyard, basically type thing, right? No money, but he has a certain amount of, of, uh, love and respect for the genre. Right. <laughs> and sometimes what you get out of that is at least entertaining. Like we, and we talked about this, but maybe it was off camera. I think that, uh, just don't be boring. You know, if, whatever you do, put something together. If you, no matter what, how much money you have, you should at least be able to write something that's, if you can't go, you know, you can't go Hollywood production values. You can at least go overboard in the sort of ridiculousness, right. Or the, although sometimes that's hard to pull off too, because there's people that do that intentionally and it doesn't work. Right. Well, I think they pull off the Maryland production value. Very well. Yeah. They've got that to a T buddy. Yeah, when, I, yeah. when I saw somewhere that like this was made in like, you know, what is it? Perry, Perry hall, Maryland. It's like in the suburbs, you know, somewhere Baltimore or something. It's in Maryland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yep, that's about right. Yeah. It's basically you're, you're in John waters backyard. Then at that point yeah, right. in their accents and everything. I'm like, yeah, you, you know exactly where they are geographically. Yeah. And, and I looked, I looked that up too. It was done for a budget of 14 grand, which, that has to be just on the makeup of the the, the alien, the beast. <laughs> yeah, and those and explosions. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the 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 little bit of animated lasers, which I mentioned <laughs> to them earlier when we did this. Not only is the alien the worst shot in space. I mean, because he does eventually hit people, right? But after forty forty thousand shots, he finally hits some people. But also the people shooting at him are horrible shots too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody in this movie can horrible. shoot well at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think you ever see a point in the movie where the monster is hit by a bullet. <laughs> Doesn't even react to being hit by a bullet. It's just kind of like pow, pow, you know. But other than the the moment where they shoot the gun out of his hand, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Before you came on, our kind of group consensus was I think we landed on a six. So it's not like the highest, I mean, it's a zero through 10 scale. We just haven't found anything that we've watched on video vortex yet that warrants anything higher than a seven. All of our best highest rated things have been sevens. Since we, I mean, we already you know, came to consensus on it. I'm, I mean, I'll agree with that and go with the, I mean, me personally, I might would give it a, I mean, I'd probably give this one a seven personally. If I was, you know, if it was just me rating it, <laughs> you know how we do, but we do a consensus thing on here, which is fine, which is good. I mean, it filters everybody's, it, it probably gives you a more accurate rating to your average person watching these movies, you know, whereas some of us might be inclined to give these types of movies overblown ratings, at least somebody, you know, your average person watching it would consider it overblown. So it's probably good to have a little bit of, you know, that consensus in there that kind of brings it into a more real, realistic range, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, me personally, I'd probably give this a seven out of 10 based on all those things I said, but I'm very much partial to, all those things I just talked about, the low budget sort of a uh, backyard. Uh, uh, what do you call it? that homegrown? I said it now. I forget the word. The regional the, uh, regional type horror movies. Yeah. So I'm more forgiving of those movies, even though I know they're bad because they don't have the budget they need. But this one, I think, definitely makes up for that. Not having that budget in the over the topness of the look of the alien, the gore that's in here, the. <laughs> The not not so special special effects maybe of the the lasers. I mean, it, it's fine as far it's not Star Wars, you know, but it's no. it's fine for what it is. <laughs> it's not Star Wars, but it was made for a budget of nothing. <laughs> yeah, you know, five or six years after Star Wars, so right. Yeah, it's made for the budget that they paid the gaffer or the gaffer or something like that. <laughs> of yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably just the catering. The catering, and yeah. even Star Wars. You know, the first one wasn't made for a massive budget. True. But- true. Even this is a drop in the bucket compared to that. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, so I think it's a lot of fun, and and these are the kind of movies that I think are good for the vortex because they're fun. You know, like it's not something you're going to watch all the time, but if you feel like a cheesy, low budget, sci fi horror type of flick, this fits the bill. I mean, it's perfect yeah. for that. So, space um, trash. <laughs> next month, it's the month of December, so Christmas. What we'll be celebrating the Christmas holiday here, and it's gonna. It's even taking over the vortex. It's, it's we're dragging Christmas down into the vortex. Yeah, and we we looked at the list and we came to a conclusion, and we're going to be talking about the brain <laughs> that I think came out in nineteen eighty eight. If I'm not mistaken, I didn't write that down, but I think it was nineteen eighty eight when that was released. I've seen. I I don't recall ever seeing this movie. I've seen the poster. I've seen the tape. 
and everything over the years. I don't think I ever sit down and watch it. We'll find out next month whether I have or not. But is it one you're familiar with or not? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not one that I've seen a ton of times. Like I have some of the other ones we've done, but I've seen it at least twice, maybe back in the '80s, late '80s, whatever, early '90s, and one other time more recently. But not not too recent enough that I, uh, you know, I like it for what I remember. It, but I, it's one that's been probably more than 12, 13, 14 years ago that I've seen it last. So. I guess we'll also find out or recall altogether what can what the hell connection this has to Christmas because yes, <laughs> oh yeah, purpose, I couldn't find like any Christmas connection, but apparently it's there. Yeah, I don't that I don't remember how I don't remember that. I know that it must not have been that it must have been a Tenebrous connection. In other words, it maybe it was just set in December around Christmas time, but I don't remember there being a thick <laughs> Christmas atmosphere to it. But it's been 13, 14 years, maybe. But well, one other weird thing, though, I can tell you for sure is that the soundtrack to The Brain is on Spotify because in another one of these weird synchronicity things that like, because Tiana told me, I didn't know that when y'all recorded this episode, y'all's part of it, that y'all were going to be doing The Brain. And then she told me that earlier that day, I think I was putting together some one of my 80s music soundtrack and whatnot playlist. And I just come across for somehow stumbled across The Brain soundtrack and added the main title theme to that. So the, the same day that y'all were, do recording this episode and saying that you're going to do the brain as the next movie. So that was just another one of those odd synchronicities that we seem to have from various things, whether it be a movie that we're doing that the date of the, that was released was that day or the day we released it online is that day. And it's just these things that fall out of the air that we don't even plan. Right. So the brain I had not thought about since that time, 10, 15 years ago, whatever it was that I saw it last until that day when I put it on that spot, that Spotify playlist and y'all, decided that was the next movie we we're doing on the vortex just a weird weirdness well the one thing that we, i think the one conclusion that we've come to over the years is that we're good at tripping and falling into things and we have yeah. tripped and, we have tripped and fallen into the vortex and now we're going to slide right back on out until next month so that's right for, uh you saw donnie and tiana earlier there's the professor smoke i'm josh we are the all-american spook show and come visit us next month for our next trip down into the vortex yeah.